Hello and welcome to the next part in the Operation Alpha Motivation, Mindset and uh, Habit Formation series. I'm more about habits but motivation, normally release these on a Monday, Motivation Monday kind of flows a little bit better and it's probably easier for people to grasp but it's all about the habits really. Um, and yeah, uh, I have a bit of a ghastly uh, um, plan here to read from today because uh, I my, my um, usual marker pens ran out. But hey ho, you know, we can't always be perfect. And guess what? That segues nicely into the topic that I'm covering today because um, this video is about how to stay on track when you are uh, injured or you become ill. Um, and of course, that's, you know, um, ultimately what we're talking about over here is trying to make the most of a less than ideal situation, which is what I'm trying to do today, um, which is easier said than done, of course, because when it happens, it's very easy to become, you know, hugely frustrated, uh, particularly if you've been doing very well and you've been in a flow and in a routine. And of course, it, you know, when something like this happens, it's a spanner in the works. Um, and subsequently it can kill your motivation as well. So your whole mood and your whole outlook over what you've uh, been doing can be completely uh, dampened. And of course, ultimately, you know, what happens next is going to be about, you know, what's going on in between your ears because ultimately you are going to have to accept the situation um, and kind of let go of all this stuff if you really do want to... Um, you know, uh, stay on track and, uh, and achieve your goals and not allow everything to go to pot. Um, and you just need to understand that dealing with these setbacks is obviously part of the journey. That might sound like a cliche, but you know, it's true, right? And if you think about it this way, this might help as well, because instead of letting this all, uh, you know, get the better of you, what you can do is you can think of uh, like a great sports person you know, being injured and having time on the sidelines. Well, think of yourself in that way. And, and instead, what you're going to be doing is planning your own glorious comeback. Uh, and that's the way we need to perceive this. So ultimately, what you're going to have to be doing is playing the long game. Um, because, and this is a very common thing, if you ignore and train through pain and illness, and a lot of people do this so frequently, you know, what's going to happen is, Ultimately, you're going to have to pay the bill at some point. And by that, I mean, you know, your injury is going to get worse. You're going to turn it into something um, worse than it could have been had you respected it and uh, rested appropriately. Or if you're properly ill, you could make yourself more ill as well. And obviously what that uh, is going to lead to is more time out of the game than necessary and therefore, ultimately, you're going to get up further away from your goal than you need, uh, than you than than is necessary. Which is, you know, unfortunate, but it's understandable because people just don't want to let go. Particularly when they're in that groove, they just want to keep going. Uh, but remind yourself of that, um, and then, then what you want to do, particularly if you've got uh, an injury, is you want to make sure you have a proper diagnosis rather than guessing. And again, this is something I come across so frequently. People just won't make the time to go and see a therapist and get a proper di uh, prescription. And the, the niggles, they never go away. They become worse. And ultimately, it just leads to the outcome that you're trying to avoid. And that's the really you know, uh, sad irony about it. So again, think of yourself as like a sports person. What do they do? They don't just leave it. They don't just guess. They get the best help that's available. They get the prescription and the diagnosis or the diagnosis that leads to the prescription. And that would be the remedial exercise um, and, and, you know, whatever the skilled professional gives you that you're not going to be able uh, to come up with yourself because it's not your it's not your field. Right. And ultimately, what's that going to lead to? You're going to get back into the game sooner and therefore you're going to be back doing what you're enjoying and working towards the results uh, that you want. Now, mentally, what else can you do? Well, let me just adjust this a little bit. Might sound like a stretch, but you can see this as an opportunity. And I know you might be rolling your eyes and thinking, yeah, okay, whatever. But genuinely, you can, because remember, you know, your training is just one part in the puzzle. You know that. You know that there's other parts to it as well. Obviously, the diet, you know, such a massive part of it. But there's also the factors that, you know, maybe you 
you might not be paying as much attention to as perhaps uh, you should be, like your sleep quality and duration, the stress which we've uh, spoken about before. So what, while you've got this time away from training, you could put that same amount of time into refining your systems, getting super, super organized about your diet, sleep and stress. So you've absolutely got that bang on point. And when you go back training, actually, it was an opportunity because you're in an even better place than you would have had you just been going um, along the way that you were. And you might even find that you'll discover something new that you enjoy because you might discover a way of training around your pain or, uh, or, or injury if that's the problem. And you might, as a result, discover, um, you know, a form of exercise that you enjoy even more. Yeah. Now, in terms of your nutrition, this is where people typically turn to comfort eating when they get injured. Uh, it's just one of the ways to go get, get through it and they lose the motiv motivation. Well, what you're going to have to do is, you know, if you're able to work with your partner to keep you accountable and support you, that would be great. Um, but you're, you're, again, your pl forward planning is going to be even more important because if you do that, you are closing the door uh, on those moments where you're going to make poorer choices, right? And the other thing is, you know, unless you're bulk cooking um, for the week, the food, you want to have lots of easy go-to options as well, yeah? Stuff that, particularly if you're feeling sick, is not going to feel like a massive uh, chore to cook. And it's easy to throw together, but is in line with uh, your nutrient, um, your nutrition requirements. The other thing I would say, I always say this, I know, but keep tracking, keep doing the tracking process because again, you're going to be seeing what's happening to your body, and if you, you know, it's going to prevent a situation where you just, you know, drift for weeks and end up putting on a load of weight, which is obviously what you don't want. If you're doing that tracking process every week, it's going to flag up immediately. Um, you know, if you're putting on weight. Uh, before it becomes a massive problem and then you're going to be uh, dealing with it and just mentally more uh, connected to what's going on. Right, I will wrap that up. If you have any feedback or questions, you can email me at wolfpack at operation-alpha.com. Cheers.